Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series. My name is Noob and this is Drive on Moscow, a brand new game just released on Steam. Uh, basically from the designers of Battles of the Bulge, which was an award winning game. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited because I've never played a game like this before. It's more strategy. Uh, what I will be doing in this game is I will be uh, playing as the USSR, I will be playing as the Soviet Union, the motherland, uh, the people that lost the most soldiers in the Second World War. And uh, yeah, you, you get to choose between two uh, sides, the Axis uh, and the Soviets, of course. So uh, the Axis, of course, is Germany. Uh, Italy, uh, yeah, I forgot who was the rest. I wasn't very, I, I, I didn't fight in the Second World War, but it was, uh, yeah, basically Germany who took over the whole uh, world. And, uh, but we're gonna play as uh, the Soviets. Um, okay, so I opened the game, and this is the first thing that you see. Oh, let's just try and close this one for a second. Steam key. Uh, okay, so so drive on Moscow background in June of 1941 the Axis powers invaded the Soviet Union after a summer of almost uninterrupted victory they have shattered the defending armies uh, Okay, so then the attackers close uh, in on the on one objective that will finally collapse Soviet resistance at the capital city of Moscow. The remaining defenders rally around the city. Uh, the coming battle will decide the, fa uh, the fate of World War II and the world. So, objectives. As the, as the game opens, the Axis race to take Moscow before the brutal Russian uh, winter sets in. To win, they must either occupy the city itself or capture enough other key points to force surrender. So I'm not sure what's going on. We can either close this or next. So I don't know. Let's go next. Units and map. You control the actual military units that uh, par that participated in the battle. Oh, that's nice. So you have a lead badge damage uh, that they do. The name is 29 armed uh, armored division probably. It's the 29th armored uh, type is infantry, armor, uh, armor, cavalry, uh, airborne or motorized infantry uh, if the sound is a little bit too loud uh, excuse me I'll check it out now and fix it uh, strength points so basically damage is the same as strength points firepower and health okay so you have all uh, infantry motorized infantry which is uh, basically gatling guns you have armor divisions which is the panzer or the I guess that's uh, the type uh, type 64s uh, if I could, could be the KV ones let's see I'm a little bit into world of tanks so uh, then the cavalry and the airborne divisions so the game map shows the area around Moscow divided into spaces showing terrain forests and cities help defenders okay units move faster on uh, roads Soviet units can make uh, long-range moves on railroad. Okay, rivers hinder movement. So always remember that. Uh, what's 2VP, 2VP? Capturing, okay, so capturing spaces with red victory labels bring the Soviets closer to the victory. Blue spaces benefits the Axis. So we need to go as uh, the Soviets we will be playing is the red one. So all I see is red. Okay, the game is played uh, in impulses. So during an impulse, a player activates a space. All friendly units in that space move and attack. Then the other player takes an impulse. So it's basically turn base, click a unit, uh, then, an, uh, then an eligible uh, unshaded destination. So we can move them there. Move other units in the active uh, space if desired. 
So we'll try that now. Undo to try something else. We can do undo or commit to proceed. So you can either commit the move or undo the move. So activate, uh, well, sorry, active units fight enemies in their space. Hmm, that's interesting. So here is click the key to learn more. Click the key to learn more. Uh, the wider the band, the more likely the result. Okay, so there will be a band of some sort that we would be able to win. Okay, front line show which side controls a space. There we go. Unit must be able to trace a path back to supply source uh, or they will not be able to act. Victorious uh, armor gets an extra move. Okay, that's nice. So the briefing helps you plan for the turn, uh, the calendar for the future, uh, try the access against the computer opponent in Operation Typhoon. So we can either... Eh. So that's the basics. What's basics? Okay, so yeah, that was basics. Tutorial is... we. Ooh, okay. We can actually play the tutorial. Uh, let's do that just for this episode. Okay, welcome. This tutorial shows the game interface and concepts. After the tutorial, you can click help in the menu at the top left to learn more. To leave the tutorial, click the menu button, then main menu. Okay, so let's go to next. Okay, the map shows several hundred miles around the Soviet capital of Moscow. Scroll in and out to zoom or pan to move around the area. The map is divided into spaces, each with a name. Okay, so... Uh, we can't pan left and right. We can only pan up and down. We can zoom in. Now we can pan. If you click and drag to the left, to the right. Mm, okay. So this is 24th uh, Red Army, 32nd Red Army against the Tiger Division. It looks like uh, then. Okay. So, yeah. Let's go zoom out all the way. Got two arm. Uh, got an Army Division and the 32nd Arm uh, Red Army Division here, and we need to take the Red. Okay, so, oh, wow, the fight has started, boys, we need to get in there. Okay, the game is played over a series of turns, each of which is broken into impulses. Each impulse, a player picks a space on the map and moves uh, any or all of the units in it. Okay, so, click the, uh, click the tip of the grey uh, wedge to activate this space. Uh, Volokol Volokolamsk. Okay, so, okay. So now that Volokolamsk is activated, you can activate your units in the space. Okay, so please follow the tutorial. Okay. Okay, the first unit, the first unit is the 53rd Corps. Uh, the foot soldiers tell you that uh, it's an infantry unit, and the five white. Uh, pipes are five strength points so 53rd corpse attack five times in combat and takes five hits before it is destroyed okay that's very interesting uh, the second unit is the 9th panzer division uh, is an armored unit mostly fast and hard hitting tank it it has four strength uh, points so it can attack four times and uh, it, it can be attacked four times go ahead and click the tip of the grey wedge, uh, select the 53rd uh, corps unit in Vo Volokolamsk. Okay, so selected them. Infantry moves one space per turn to any adjacent space. Okay, so uh, click Lotoshino to send 53rd corps to attack the Soviet forces here. Okay, there we go. So we're attacking. Yeah, combat. So, since there is a Soviet unit uh, in the Lotoshino, uh, 
there will be combat. Once you are done moving, uh, this Soviet uh, unit uh, has already taken damage and has three of its five strength points left. So, now let's see here. Okay, notice that the friendly armor unit already in Lo uh, Lotoshino is joining the attack. Okay. So, uh, this is automatic as long as they have, haven't done anything yet this turn. So, I need to remember that. So, there we go. Now, click the other unit in Voloko uh, Lumps. Uh, activating a space, activates all friendly units in it. So, if you want to move that other unit, you need to do it now. Okay, so... Uh, armor moves uh, one space per turn or two along a road or railroad. For example, 9th Panzer could move uh, by rail to Ru Ruza, uh, then by road to Mosaisk. Okay, so where do I want to go? Click to Mosaisk to move the 9th Panzer uh, there. It will find a, a legal path to uh, move there. So, there we go. Okay, so. Since there are no Soviet units in either Ruza or uh, Mosaisk, uh, you will own those spaces. Uh, okay, at the end of the impulse. Ownership is important for movement, uh, combat, supply and victory. To regain control of Mosaisk, the Soviets will have to either force you out or reoccupy the space after your forces uh, move on. But be careful, nothing stops them from taking Ruza back right now. Okay. So the ninth uh, Panzer will be uh, grayed out at the end of the impulse. It has been activated and cannot move or attack for the rest of the turn. It will fight back if attacked. Okay. So normally if you change your mind, you can click the undo button in the upper left corner, which is here. Uh, to take you back to the recent action. However, the button has been disabled for this tutorial. Okay, uh, you have finished your moves for this impulse and are ready to combat. Once you click the commit uh, button, your moves are locked in and you can no longer undo. Okay, to commit, first click uh, the action button in the upper right corner, then click commit, then it appears. So here so there we go commit oh cool wow it says we only take took one hit but they took four hits mm. oh i think that's that's the way they attacked so Combat occurs whenever an activation unit, uh, uh, activated unit, and on an enemy unit share a space at the end of an impulse. Even if the activated unit did not move, each unit fires uh, once for each strength point. So the Panzer fires four times. Fifty-third uh, corpse fired. Okay, so each unit uh, fires once for each strength point. To uh, so the eleventh Panzer fired four times. A uh, 53rd uh, corps fired uh, five times and the Soviets fired three times. Okay, so next. Uh, a unit's chance of doing damage with each point depends on the number of factors, such as uh, whether uh, it is infantry or armored. That's not a number of factors, that's just one factor. Okay, other, bo other bonuses such as supply uh, decrease the chance of taking damage, uh, forest and uh, the cities. Okay, yeah. Forest and cities absorb damage. Each point of damage destroys uh, one strength point. Okay. Here, uh, your attacking forces score six hits. The forest absorbed the first two, and the Soviet defenders uh, defender took the other four. Okay, so since the Soviet only had three strength points to begin with, it was destroyed. So we fired a total of nine. Two was absorbed, so that's seven. 
Okay. So go ahead and click close to close the combat uh, resolution dialog. So. Okay. So, uh, Kalinin. Because you completely destroyed the enemy, all activated armor uh, units in the space get a bonus breakthrough. Move, uh, click. Okay, so our armor units, which is the tanks, they get an extra move because we won. Click Kalinin uh, to, in or to order uh, 11th Panzer uh, to break through and capture the space. So, click on them and go there. So, we've got Kalinin. We're trying to get the blue ones now because we're playing at the Axis as the tutorial dictates we have to. Uh, sometimes Axis armor units can break through two spaces, but not right now. Okay. Uh, you've done all you can uh, with your forces in Volokolamsk. So click the action button and click uh, commit again to end your impulse. Okay, so now it's their turn. Uh, time has passed, 6 hours has passed, uh, after each impulse time passes, the clock may not advance at all or a few hours may go by. Uh, in the first scenario, each turn is 3 days, so 72 hours. This screen shows the dates covered by the current turn and how many hours elapse during the impulse. Okay. So the key to drive uh, on Moscow is figuring out what to do first to make the most of the impulses you get uh, you never know when time will sneak up on you and it's long uh, it's a long way to moscow so you need to be very careful of uh, the time that you use click continue to set the soviet uh, player take an impulse okay so let's see what he does okay the soviet player passed uh, which means no space was activated. Passing is risky because you give up your impulse uh, and the other player can end the turn early by also passing. But it uh, lets you see what your opponent does before you commit your own forces. Uh, it's your impulse again. So it's our, our time to shine. Click continue. Okay, now look at uh, Bryansk. Uh, where our troops are trying to force a river crossing. Uh, click Bryansk to activate the space. So click Bryansk. Yeah, okay. We're going to carry on the offensive but also secure our flanks. Uh, select the 10th motor division unit of uh, the ones in Bryansk. So 10th motor division, I can't see actually. Let's just zoom in here a bit. So that's the 10th motor division. So the unit in Bryansk are motorized infantry. They fight like infantry but move like armor. Great. Armor and motorized units move up to three uh, spaces if they follow friendly uh, roads or railroads the whole way. This is called un uh, unopposed movement. Click Chromie now. Okay, so it's here. So there is the railroad. Okay, you now have a stronger force in Chromie. Uh, this is important. This is important uh, because even though there are no immediate threat, the Soviet may be closer than you think. Okay. Soviet armor, uh, motorized infantry and cavalry can also move three spaces along friendly roads and railways. Yeah, of course. Sounds fair. In addition, any Soviet Union except cavalry can make a strategic move of up to four spaces along friendly railroads. So the, the Soviets get an extra move on railroads. Then, so the armor in uh, Kastamaya uh, or the infantry in the Voronezh uh, could move to Fatej in uh, one impulse and be ready to mount a counter. So uh, watch your flank. So these two, Voronezh and Katamayo, they can actually move by railroad all the way here. So let's see. I need to always be on the look for my behind. Now select the 36 motor division unit in Bryansk. Okay, for 36. And then notice that even if you wanted to, you couldn't move these troops to Kromi. Only three units from each side may occupy a space at the end of a move. 
So, uh, click out a chef to cross the river and attack. So, click here. So, they ought to... Okay. Crossing a river under fire is hard. Only one unit can use a given riv uh, river crossing into enemy occupied territory. Per impulse, you only, you, your other troops in Bryans can't follow the first unit directly. So fortunately there is another way. Click the last unit in Bryans and we can go uh, around. So uh, even though this unit can't move directly from Bryans to uh, Karachev, uh, it can still get there. Uh, click Karachev and the unit will find a path. Uh, let's see what's, which way. So it goes right around. So we've joined the battle now. Uh, notice that the 10th Panzer and the Soviet 5th Airborne uh, both have badges in their upper. Oh, okay, so let's see here. So they both have badges. Oh, mine and theirs. Uh, this means they are elite which, uh, with bonus to attack or defend. The Soviet units are both special types. The Axis do not have 5th uh, Airborne is a uh, paratrooper. Once per game it can move by air. Okay, so... Uh, so the Devotor uh, Division uh, is cavalry and can travel two spaces while without a road or a railroad. Okay. So to combat, hit the commit. Let's commit. Boom, boom, boom. Oh wow, that's awesome! This time the Soviets retreated to avoid destruction. Uh, retreating reduces the number of hits units receive. Uh, this can mean that the dif uh, can mean the difference between destruction and living to fight another day. Because the enemy was not destroyed, there is no breakthrough move. Oh. So click close, to close the combat. So now it's the end. It's the Soviets' turn. Let's see what they got. Soviet player has passed. Okay, so he passed again and zero hours it says uh, uh, passed. It says um, a lot of information is available to, ha to help you make your decision. Click the help button here. Where's the help button? Eh. Ah, sorry, I didn't see the little white thing. Okay, the game menu shows the scenario you're playing. Tutorial. Okay, so it shows tutorial. The current turn, one, uh, one in a scenario covering turns one to five. Okay. And the time remaining. The Axis has earned 10 uh, victory points. If they have 12 or less at the end of the game, the Soviets will win. So 13 or 14 is a draw, 15. Okay, let's see here. It says 10 in the middle, I think. Turn one, one out of five. Uh, victory points, it's 12 for the Soviets, 15 for the Axis, they need more, 10. Uh, 10 is the current, so uh, the menu also sh allows you to access other information. So click briefing button for the menu briefing. Yeah. This is my jam. This is your briefing. It gives you information about the current situation. <laughs> yeah. It's like World War II Rihanna going on here. Okay, click supply from the below uh, supply. Okay, so units must maintain a chain of friendly spaces to a supply source indicated. Uh, okay, so supply source. Probably these little circles here at the bottom. So it's in indicated on a map by icons uh, red for Soviets, blue for Axis. 
Units that cannot trade supply at the start of the turn are out of supply for the whole turn. Okay. So out of supply units cannot move or attack and defend at the penalty. So I need to at least keep my spaces covered all around. If an out of supply unit is still cut off at the start of the next turn, it becomes isolated. Isolated units don't even defend. They just die. Okay. If an isolated unit is still unable to trace supply uh, to the next turn and uh, shares a space with enemy units, it loses two strength points. If this, uh, if this removes its last strength point, the unit surrenders. So the Axis had major problems getting gas to their spearhead. Even if they can uh, trace supply beginning uh, on the third turn, Axis armor units can run out of fuel. Oh fuck, so click objectives. So objectives is, as the Axis, you're trying to take as much Soviet territory as possible. So you win by taking Moscow or by surrounding the city at the end of the game. Otherwise, victory is determined by victory points. You earn VP by capturing and holding objectives. You lose VP if your enemy are, if you, if you, your enemies are destroyed. So you lose victory points if your enemies are destroyed. So that's okay. Uh, as the Axis, you are trying to take as much uh, Soviet territory as possible. On the way to the win of the capture of Moscow itself, if the Axis controls the city at the end of an impulse, they win the game instantly. Uh, another is by uh, uh, accumulating victory points. Victory points. There are two types of objectives. One represents especially uh, valuable uh, cities, uh, supply center and transportation hubs and gives the Axis VP uh, every turn. So the other gives the Axis VP while they hold a space. But if the Axis later loses control of the space, they lose the VP as well. Okay, so that makes point. Uh, okay, the Soviets uh, earn VP by destroying Axis armor and infantry units. The Axis receive nothing for destroying Soviet units. Uh, they'll be back. The briefing shows you a current situation. Now let's take a look at the future. Click to close the button. Okay, so so we have to bring this up and then go calendar. Okay, so it's 1941. The calendar shows all date-based events that take place during the drive of Moscow. <coughs> the first scenario operation typhoon lasts five turns. So if I scroll up, you can see this is the, okay, so September 30th to October 2nd, three axes prepared, uh, offensive axis air uh, interdiction, uh, beginner air supply. So on the second, so on the 3rd to the 5th October, axis prepared, offensive axis air uh, inter, uh, interdiction. So this is also battles fought, I believe. Okay. So let's go. Soviet reinforcements arrive on many turns. If you control uh, to the right, uh, if you sorry, if you scroll to the right, uh, you can see additional troops arriving uh, turn two and later. The Axis never get reinforcements, but do receive replacements, which can be used to fix damaged units. Uh, replacements uh, may only be used with the appropriate type of unit. Okay. Later, the Soviets will receive their own replacements, which can rebuild, destroy units, as well as fixing existing units. The calendar also lists uh, turn-based rules for the first three turns, and the Axis receives a uh, prepared offensive, uh, simulating the sudden uh, onslaught of their carefully uh, husbanded assault troops. Uh, this gives the Axis free attacks, during which the Soviets may not fire back. Okay, uh, the Soviets also suffer from command confusion for the first two turns. Uh, I don't see where it says that. Oh wait, Soviet command confusion. Uh, so it says there and then uh, access victory if and okay so. So here it basically states what it says. Okay, so command confusion. 
Uh, first two turns on simulating their uh, lack of preparation for a major offensive Soviet units that end uh, a regulate uh, impulse, not a prepared offensive in the same space as the Axis may not move for the rest of the turn. Okay, also, the Axis uh, starts with a superiority each turn, they may interdict and paralyze one Soviet unit. Okay, you'll see other special rules as well. The first time a new rule appears, it is described in the briefing. Pay, uh, pay especially close attention to the weather, which dramatically uh, reshapes the battlefield as the autumn rains and the brutal Russian uh, winter approaches. Yeah, you are now uh, ready to play Operation Typhoon. If you still have questions, you can replay this tutorial or try the help button. Uh, good luck. So. That's it for this tutorial. We've done the tutorial. It's pretty, pretty basic. Uh, a lot of basic. <laughs> There's a little music. Okay. Yeah, we can put it in German. So maybe this is a German game. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for the very first uh, episode. It's been a long one, but that's the tutorial of this game, and basically, that's what we're gonna play. Ooh. Computer opponent or oh, hot seat. We can actually play against other players. We can play multiplayer I don't know what hot seat means, but we can go multiplayer. We can play against the computer I'm gonna com play against the computer. I'm gonna try and be the Soviet and uh, Yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next episode. Please subscribe and let me know what you think. Thank you guys. See you